Bernard now, Hopkins now. posts. He'll you follow with his eyes in the footsteps in corner, okay? of Stanley Ketchell. Harry Greb, Carlos Monzon, Marvin Hagler and Sugar Ray Robinson as the greatest of his generation. Is he that accomplished or is he just a good, strong, defiant fighter? Maybe William Joppy will tell us more. The start is crucial. Who gets into the rhythm first? And can Joppy surprise Hopkins as he promises he will? Come on, pull your arm out. Joppy can punch himself, so he, he's got to come out of respect. But can he outbox uh, Hopkins? That's the uh, the big question, as you say. Can he stay away and outbox Hopkins? The black and white trunks of the three-time middleweight champion, William Joppy from Silver Springs in Maryland. 33 years of age, Hopkins almost 39, turns in January. Will Father Time catch up with him? He looks, as always, in absolutely spectacular shape. Yeah, that's right. I mean, Hopkins, not a big one-puncher, but he's very persistent, very accurate, a good technical box fighter, and tends to wear his opponents down. Joppy, the underdog because of what happened with him and Felix Trinidad in the uh, middleweight unification tournament. He was floored and beaten in five as Hopkins gets in an uppercut. Hopkins his biggest win over Trinidad. Can he cement his legacy here? He says he wants to go on and defend the middleweight title 20 times. Big talk. But he's big stuff. Scrappy opening round as they both vie for the openings. Combinations from Hopkins look powerful. Seems so much bigger at the weigh-in than Joppy. He's got a three inches in height on him. Such brilliant condition for 39 next month. Good body shot from Hopkins. Fast punches. Many in boxing say there is no glaring weakness in the Hopkins makeup at all. Last loss, 1993, to the uh, brilliant Roy Jones Jr. Absolutely no disgrace in that. But a decade unbeaten. I think that's the point. There is no weakness. Everything he does well. Oh, good left hook. And he's winning this first round. Okay, stop punching. Walk it out. We gotta walk it out. We gotta walk it out. It's a good start from Bernard Hopkins. William Joppy struggling to meet him in the first round. Yeah, he'll be very happy with that start. Not out of breath at all. I'd be pretty sad if I, was the, if I was the corner there with Hopkins coming back to me. Joppy a good fighter himself though, and he's very much in this fight. 47th of Bernard Hopkins' career, 38th of William Joppy. They are quality operators, the pair of them. They've been kept apart for so many years, and there's been a real needle brewing all the way through the build-up press conference problems on the stage when Joppy thrust Hopkins back the $50,000 bet which is that Hopkins will pay Joppy if Joppy gets through the whole 12 rounds even if he loses he's got to stop him stop on. Looks strong and compact, Hopkins. Very accurate, that's just one thing with Hopkins. But if you go through his last seven, eight, nine, ten fights, there's no early blowouts there. He usually wins late and does so by working his men over continually. Wearing them down with shots from all angles. 
precision and eventually power. That's right, exactly. And Joppy is, uh, seems to be terrified when they get close. Right, Holds on straight away. Extremely nervous all week, William Joppy, as he does get before a fight. That's a better jab from him. Refused to be intimidated by Hopkins, but was stuttering through his press conference on Wednesday. I wonder if he, deep down, may believe this is a bridge too far. Coming back from personal tragedy, his five-and-a-half-week-old daughter died in July. And uh, emotionally drained, he rebuilt and refocused for this, the fight of his long boxing career. Good body shot from Hopkins. And a good jab back. Again, Hopkins just a fraction on top in this second for me. We think Joppy only three fights in the last three years. It's uh, not much. He's not a youngster anymore, and uh, maybe that'll tell as the fight goes on. Yes, he could so easily have been beaten by our own Howard Eastman. If Eastman had just done that little bit more, pushed the gas through the 12 rounds. He tied very badly in that fight, but down in the last... And Eastman could well have won that, maybe probably should have won it. Are we talking about a fine fighter against just a simple world-class operator? Maybe there is a grade between them. It looks like it to date. Here's the joppy corner led by Adrian Davis as always. No real alarm bells or major concern yet, but he's got to get a foothold in quickly. The feeling was that if Joppy could start fast, maybe that would uh, make Hopkins struggle, but he hasn't. Well, they said they had uh, Hopkins' number, they could outbox him, and they're not doing that so far for me anyway. I think uh, Hopkins has just edged the first two, and they were sure, surely willing to look at winning the first two, Joppy. See, predominantly white trunks of Bernard Hopkins from Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. He has so many fans here tonight, including Alan Everson of the 76ers, the all-star basketball player, to support him. Joppy in black and white. Big historian of the game. Nice guy out of the ring, born again Christian. But Hopkins is such a nasty, dangerous guy in between those ropes. He is technically very good at everything. His defense is good. His balance, his countering. Joppy trying to get close with the jab. But where's the movement around Hopkins as he said he'd do? Well, he's not working. He's frightened of being counted and getting caught. And that's why he's... Um, just stop working really. Doesn't know how to throw and not be caught. America's Ring magazine, considered by many to be the Bible of boxing, rated Hopkins as having the best jab, best left hook, best uppercut, best body puncher in boxing. <laughs> That's not bad. You're topping out at almost every list there. I think Roy Jones may have something to say about that, and Floyd Mayweather. Over inside, as we mentioned earlier, but Hopkins is getting through to Joppy, whose defense looks open. Remember the punch resistance, he went down against Howard Eastman and he was blitzed by Felix Trinidad. Both massive punches, though, you have to say that Trinidad, a natural puncher, so is Eastman. Very big punches, both of those, so you can't read much into that late in the fight against uh, Eastman, of course. Hopkins has 31 knockouts, though. But he's complaining about a low blow here, and it's timeout called by Earl Morton to let him recover from that. Not often you see the executioner wincing with pain. No, and, uh, it must have hurt him, that's for sure. I didn't notice the low blow. Could have been on the blind side to us. Not everyone's cup of tea, Bernard Hopkins says, like old blue eyes. He'll do it his way, and only his way. He's fallen out with promoters and managers, 
We try to get a match with Joe Calzaghe, at least Frank Warren did. Seems to have fallen through for now. He's looking for the big guns. Shane Mosley, Oscar De La Hoya. But he's got a deal with a uh, classy welt middleweight here. I don't, I, don't, I don't think he's big enough for our Joe Calzaghe. He's not got the power to keep a big man like Calzaghe away. Slightly biased there. <laughs> <laughs> Very probably, but no, I think that um, he's not big enough for a 12 stone man and a big 12 stone man like Calzaghe. You may be right. Adrian Davis. Very good. Suck it in. He's doing beautiful. Now the jab is landing. Real small thing. Put the bucket down. Put the bucket down. Let me go reach for it. Suck it in. Get that grease on him. Looking good, job, but that's what it is. And now try to send that right hand all the right up the Because he's going down, and he's doing right here. Because he's doing now. That stops everything. Give him some more juice, please. I want some more. Like the use of his jab in that round. Yeah. Wants the right hand to go through. Says, you're looking good, Joppy. Hopkins calls him sloppy, Joppy. Yeah, I don't think he is looking good. I mean, he's, in fact, he's looking good, of course, but Hopkins is winning it for me. I don't think they should be praising him too much. Hopkins was um, got caught more in that third round. Joppy did come back into it. But for me, they shouldn't be praising Joppy, they should be making him work harder and uh, get more involved. Ah. Fourth round, world middleweight title, the real thing on the line here. WBC, IBF, WBA super champion, Bernard Hopkins, ordinary champion, William Joppy. Don't worry too much about that. What you have got is the two best. 11 stone 6 pound fighters in the world today. Again, Hopkins backs up Joppy. Uppercut, strong body shots. Joppy looking disorganized. Oh, he's going to be here, isn't he? Oh, this is class from Bernard Hopkins. The real wise uppercuts inside, they're crafty. It's a real treat for the viewers back home, Nicky, to see Bernard Hopkins because he really is one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters. Yeah, he is. No weaknesses at all in his uh, army. This is a man who was in hospital after knife attacks for six months with a punctured lung when he was a kid. Rumble on the streets of the Badlands area in North Philadelphia. Lost his debut that light heavyweight. And only one other defeat to Roy Jones in his career. That's something. Yeah, it's special. And um, Joppy coming forward more now. Shakes his head as one right hand gets through from Joppy. He's not a big puncher. Might have to do it the long way. The Silver Springs man. There's a place just out Wash outside Washington, D.C., Joppy. He's in no trouble yet, but he's just being outboxed. Good job from Joppy. That's what his camp want him to do. If he can throw more of those and open the guard of Bernard Hopkins. Heads come close. It was a good left to oh. back comes Hopkins. Right hand was a peach of a shot. Best of the contest from Bernard Hopkins here in the fourth. It's getting much closer, Adam. Joppy's making a fight of it now. Vashti there on the back of William Joppy's trunks. That was his young daughter who so tragically died. He has three other children, not a brash flash man by any stretch of the imagination. Wants to do things for his family. Yeah, he's had a hard last year, hasn't he? That's probably why he's been out of the ring for so long as well. Okay, you gotta put a little pop on that jab for me, baby. Put a little pop on that jab. All under control from Bowie Fisher. How did he score that one? I, I again I gave it to Hopkins, but it's getting much closer. Around I wouldn't have argued if it went the other way, but gave it to Hopkins.
good body punches too from Hopkins and the right hand clever stuff right up to the body straight right hand to the head I mean you know not the usual sort of combination double double up good stiff jabs too good stiff jabs Popping in his uh, pop the jab in the corner. Pop the well, jab, good, good stiff the jab. And Joppy landed with a couple no, of himself. He dawn, did. They're both corners are saying use the jab. Interesting. 282nd round of Bernard Hopkins' his career. 201st of William Joppy's. They've never met until now. It was possible in that middleweight unification tournament. Joppy lost to Trinidad. And Hopkins beat Keith Holmes, the wily southpaw from Washington, D.C. And when they met in the final, Bernard Hopkins had the night of his life. And Trinidad's been back in the ring before the fight, of course. I wonder if they're trying to build something back up here. Should Hopkins come through? <laughs> Trinidad says he's retired. Bernard Hopkins certainly isn't with a right hand over the top. Starting to increase the volume, as so often he does. What we're watching, Nicky, is world-class here. So many domestic fights for the year, but there's shifts in the plot, there's little yeah. nudges and winks and moves. He does nothing wrong, does he? Everything he does is correct and with, with a meaning. His balance is perfect, he never seems to lose his balance. Even in the infighting here, everything is thought about. First world middleweight champion from Philadelphia, probably the best fighter since Joe Frazier to come out of the city with the Liberty Bell. Joppy trying to back Hopkins up. Good right hand got through. Again, they come together. It's getting a little bit sloppy, but I can't see so far Hopkins anywhere close to stopping Joffy. Looking for the range, William Joffy. But again, every time Hopkins lands, they seem to have that slight more effect on Joffy. It's just shorter, classier work too. Joppy trying the long one-twos, left, right, but the more telling shots being done by Hopkins for me. Joppy, who first won his world title out in Japan. As we uh, close on the fifth round here, Joppy putting the pressure on Hopkins. Starting to uh, get a bit of confidence going. Yeah, Joppy, you know, for somebody so confident and sworn to wanting to stop his man, he's going backwards here, Joppy getting back into the fight a bit. Hopkins just retreating for the first time there. That's a round for William Joppy. That'll give him a great deal of self-belief. Yeah, and he needed that too, but um, for him me, him Hopkins, Hopkins still seemed to be in control, he wasn't working so hard, but he was in control. Stay careful though, Chandler, yeah. we just stay careful, because he's dirty. He's dirty. And with two men in the back of the tank, but I don't know what that's going to do. If you two men put me behind the back of the tank, you're going to do that. Open up one more time. Adrian Davis, the... Wise old man in the corner there, it's the hands of the cut yeah. man, Cassius Green. Yeah, to get that right He'll be in his ear all night too. Yeah, huh? Well, there's no Everything emotion there at all. There's so, uh, I suppose, confident. He looks downbeat as uh, Hopkins, but he's just so confident in what, what he's doing. He's got his plan. He thought he'd take a break there. And, um, and I'm sure you'll see him come back out and try and get on top in this uh, sixth round. First fight for 14 months for William Joppy, who went out to Tokyo and stopped now Toka Pozumi in 10. John Coyle, our referee, did that one and said it was uh, an excellent performance by William Joppy. Five years younger 
remember them, Hopkins, will that come into play? Well, we'll see Hopkins had a quiet fifth round, but I think he chose to have a quiet round. I got you. I mean, at some point, the wheels have to come off. Bernard Hopkins, he can't do this forever. Good right hand on the top, and Joffy. Oh, body shots. Look at the speed and variety. The crisp punching from the executioner. Trying to break him up on the inside. Good body shots, yeah. Just turns the screws every so often, Hopkins. He knows when to apply the pressure and when to take a break. I don't see him stopping Joppy tonight, though. You know, these are the two best middleweights in the world. Both technically very, very good. Yeah, few stoppages at the very top level. Joppy blames the Trinidad loss on the fact that uh, he says the Puerto Rican had illegally wrapped hands. He also said he got caught up in the hype and went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, something he won't do with Hopkins. I don't believe all that illegally wrapped hands uh, stuff. Unless you've got a, a bit of meth in your gloves, I don't think any bandage can add that much power to a punch. Maybe protect the hands, but deny to the power of the punch. What was so impressive was the way that Bernard Hopkins outboxed the boxer in Felix Trinidad as he backs Jock to be out here with strength. And look at that uppercut. This is classy work inside from Hopkins. Really good stuff. At the moment, a bit too much of everything. Now gunning William Joppy. Back on top in the sixth round. Stop working, stop working. Walk it out, walk it out. Oh, just a languid look there from William Joppy. In this in fighting doesn't suit him at all. And Hopkins grows in stature. Oh, he's one very, very hard man, Bernard Hopkins. A brilliant finish to that round from Hopkins. And there for the first time I saw him getting on top, really getting on top. And Joffy quick just looked hands, a little baby. bit tired. Quick, don't worry about the power. Here we see the infighting. Short uppercuts from the Hopkins. Quick. Hooks around the head. Works the body well too. He does everything inside so well. That was early on in the round. But at the end of the round he started to get to Joffy. His defence is good. Everything's good inside. Bernard Hopkins, who is controlling this for you, Nicky, and for everyone uh, here. Four rounds up for me is, uh, is Hopkins. Right. Only the right, fifth round on, went, went on, against him. First one, the IBF middleweight title with a seventh round stoppage against Secundo Mercado. And as we enter the second half of this, his reign of eight and a half years doesn't look like it's going to be broken. William Joppy has a great deal of work to do in the uh, black trunks, the black boots, out of the blue corner, and Maryland. Those body shots and that jab, every punch from Hopkins looks to have impact. Well, Joppy needs to keep this long and he's not doing that. This suits Hopkins in close. Yes, to give Joppy a chance, you'd have thought he'd have to box on the outside, beat Hopkins to the punch. Exactly, and he's not doing it. That's what he said he would do, but he's a tiredness now. Now Hopkins looks to be getting to Joppy. Now, for the first time, I'm seeing a, a bit of um, panic in Joppy's face and work. Using the experience to rest on Joppy there. Show him his physical strength that he's needed to get through the challenges of John David Jackson, Glenn Coffey Johnson, Simon Brown, Robbie Allen, Antoine Eccles. It's a great list. 
of decent fighters, and Hopkins has beaten them all. And he's stepping the pace up. Cassius Green animated in Joppy's corner, leading with their charge to get his feet around Hopkins, light on his toes, but he's already looking heavy-legged. Yes, he is. He's not uh, moving away now. Every time Hopkins comes through, he just grabs on. The smart money said. A middle to late round stoppage for Bernard Hopkins. Another body shot digs in under the right elbow of William Joppy, who fires back with an uppercut, but it has no effect at all on Hopkins. That's good, look how fast those combinations are inside. He's second best inside Joppy, needs to move out. I break! Troy Mayweather, Roy Jones, until recently Marco Antonio Barrera, all vying for the best pound for pound fighter in the world. This is definitely one of the top three. Yeah, I still think Jones is, is up there as the best. But Hopkins is uh, very close. Choppy being smothered. Again, Hopkins targets the body. Another round, sits down, breathing a little more heavily, but um, very comfortable. Well, what can William Joppy do? Is there anything, or does he just not have the tools to deal with a Hopkins on this sort of No, form? he's not got the tools. The only way he can win this is to get lucky with a punch, I think. And uh, suddenly Hopkins maybe grow old overnight but uh, I don't see him having the tools to do this job Hopkins is looking superior in every department there's more of a deflated look about William Joppy Nothing really has gone right for him. He must be a mile behind on the cards already. He has stopped 25 in his career. He doesn't have that one-punch power to really change a contest. And Hopkins has always had a rock-solid chin. I think that's the point. He doesn't have the power to sit to the worry Hopkins. He can worry most middleweights in the world, but not Hopkins. Oh, good right hand from... Uh, Bernard Hopkins. He's got guts and heart. William Joppy. Come back from that Trinidad Ross. But uh, Hopkins is artillery. Blimey. It is pretty outstanding. How do you think Hopkins would fare against the likes of Delahoy and Mosley? And Calzaghi, who you believe beats him. Yeah, I think with Mosley and Dullahoe, he beats them. But I don't think uh, he beats Calzaghi. Calzaghi is a very big mate, a super middleweight. Hopkins, Dullahoe. What a fight. If Dullahoe is strong and middleweight. Yeah, Hop Hopkins beats Dullahoe, no problem. Right hand from the side of Joppy's head. All disorganized, can't get out of the way. Oh, Hopkins, it's becoming a real struggle for William Joppy inside there now. He's working well, he's firing back to be fair. He's just had one half step behind Parker and Hopkins. Look at the accuracy Hopkins gets with those body shots with the left hook. And they're all really hard, you know, he's not the biggest of punches in the world, but every shot is delivered with power. There's a sting you can hear with every punch. Good left hook. Oh, left hand from Hopkins went straight through. Yeah, and Hop jockey now. Going backwards. Driving the punches home now. Bernard Hopkins, maybe he's sensing 
That jockey is wilting ever so slowly, round by round, chipping away. I can see it now. Two rounds ago, now, now we can see it. And forget the smart money being on Hopkins with the inside. What for me does it is Hopkins' money says he's going to be inside. You said he wouldn't. Are you changing your mind now? I am. I, um, before the fight, I thought he'd been inside late stoppage. Uh, in the early rounds of this fight, I thought there's no way he's going to stop Joppy. I can see it now. He believes he could do it and wear Joppy down, and I think he will. That's better movement from William Joppy. But there's a shudder in his body every time he gets caught with one or two of those rib punches. Walk it out, walk it out, walk it out and he's getting caught more often now, too. Another round for Bernard Hopkins. He's very tired as he sits down. Kick your down. legs up. Kick your legs up. Keep your hands high this time, Joppy. And when you're inside, start throwing right hooks at your inside. Something different. You threw a left hook in corner. Yeah. You only throw. You got to throw throw all the punches. You got to throw enough punches. Throw the right hand now. Stick to the one two. They Go know it's all going wrong. Yeah, this is Hopkins' uh, fight he's fighting here, but he hasn't got the energy to stay away. Good left hook, right hand left hook again. Here we see it, he's the master of fighting inside. Just uh, evades the left hook over the head. Got caught with that right hand, but comes back with a better left hook of his own. Out. Bernard Hopkins dominating affairs in this world middleweight title clash. Remember in the uh, white trunks, white boots, with the grey and the uh, executioner mark on them. The predominantly flag with Joppy across the waistband of the man from Silver Springs. Part of uh, Asim Rackman's team managed by Stan Hoffman and Steve Nelson, who was so confident before this that uh, he would have the style to uh, unravel Hopkins and we've seen how uh, Corey Spinks had the style that Mayorga couldn't handle but uh, I'm afraid Bernard Hopkins has been simply far too good. When you've got a good boxer like uh, uh, William Joppy in your camp and you see the skills he's exhibiting against his sparring partners, you get the idea maybe against somebody like Hopkins who's very compact but doesn't fight from the long range that he can keep away but he can't. It was a better right hand over the top from William Joppy. <laughs> Look at Hawkins walk through it. He's upsetting. Backing Joppy up. Left hook was big. Starting to get busted up again with the uppercuts. He's got to land with something big now, Joppy. He's got to get a bit of success. He needs a big right hand or something. Like that, but that didn't quite land. Hopkins too cute and clever can see most of them coming what impresses us is the way that he uh, forces his punches home takes absolutely no backward step and they all seem to be thrown quantity and pure quality he just always seems to be in range he's really stepping the pace of it. this is a man who's 39 in a few weeks time and he is incessant in the way he comes forward he says age is no barrier look at my face listen to me talk i've looked after myself in the ring and that's come from uh, living a barren life training every single day and this is the result you can't con in boxing at the highest level no you get found out oh good right hand are following two little left jabs from hopkins Again, it's the uppercuts coming through on the inside. Choppy, bewildered, hurt, and being outboxed and outclassed. Oh, right up uppercut inside from Hawkins. And oh, again. You can feel that here at ringside. William Choppy has had to take three, four huge right uppercuts and uh, it's very rare you say something is uh, a masterclass or pretty punch perfect but look what you're watching tonight yeah this is punch perfect exactly
here we go again we see it little uppercuts inside hooks body punches look at that shot oh that's painful he's brilliant absolutely brilliant no doubt about it hooks uppercut looks this was the end of the round another one comes through in a moment just misses earlier tonight Zab Judah gave us a great opener with a one round win over Jaime Rangel Travis Sims took the uh, world light middleweight title in five, five seconds out. John Ruiz beat Hasim Rachman in a rather soporific heavyweight title fight on points and in a much better affair Corey Spinks took the undisputed welterweight title Ricardo Mayorga beaten derailed the Nicaraguan showman here's the world middleweight title and you're seeing Bernard Hopkins really step up the gears now apply the pressure and uh, stop watching stop feel he really wants that not just the money but he wants that stoppage to prove something yeah he does well he's been showing off for weeks now saying he's gonna get the stoppage here we go but he's got three rounds and he's so fit look at that head to body and then the right hand they're coming from all angles and William Joppy's the number two in the world and he's not even in the races no, he's not nowhere near right hand again and he's non-stop Hopkins now we won't see a break from him just stabs his eye there Bernard Hopkins his heads bumped together no real damage the only damage is being done to William Joppy great right hand so well disguised straight down the pipe as they say right from the shoulder didn't uh, show it at all is it safe to say Nicky there is absolutely no way back for William Joppy no I don't think so he's got to get, get really lucky with a big punch and I can't see it happening I agree come on too fast too good too strong too much look at that left hand knees buckled of Joppy there he's holding on Hopkins just saw the punch coming step back through the left hook all oh, right hand he's starting to take more and more with increased regularity wonder if Earl Morton will start having a look fairly soon well, I don't think Joppy can see that see this fight out now he's hurt he's holding on he's tired and Hopkins is not gonna stop he's tried his hardest William Joppy but there has been a gulf in class even at this the very highest level of middleweight boxing Hopkins was saying beforehand that uh, if he beat Joppy it was a bit of a hiding to nothing because Trinidad had already done so but you've got to look at this performance as the swelling on the right side of Joppy's face gets worse the right hand count is getting through again I think Joby's gonna get through this 10th round at least there's the clapper board looks like he'll survive this one but it's another round down it's all Bernard Hopkins back in Mosul Iraq they are still glued to this big promotion as they have been for the last five hours and they've seen some quality fights tonight and they're watching one of the best in the world they must love that yeah absolutely I mean okay the fight's not uh, you know it's not an even money affair where both fighters are going into but they're watching a master class in boxing here Hopkins unbelievable right hand straight couldn't be seen accuracy is terrific that's the same shot from the reverse angle and it just shows how hard it is to defend from those shots swellings on the face of William Joppy he's taken quite a bit of punishment tonight William Joppy looks a beaten man many stoppages late on Bernard Hopkins' record this round against William James and against Clint Coffey Johnson will he go for it now oh yeah 
Hopkins came straight out and landed a big right hand left hook. He says $50,000 is a lot of money for someone who came from the projects. Will he win the bet? Will he stop William Joppy? It looks ever more likely. Look at that swelling on the right cheekbone of William Joppy suddenly come up. And there's another one on the forehead. And the body is being attacked from all sides. Oh, uppercuts have been quite brilliantly executed by the executioner. The referee has been quite lenient here, allowing Joppy to hold on. This has not been a boxing classic, but it has been a classic performance from Bernard Hopkins, who shows there is still plenty more in the tank, even at nearly 39. Well, his fitness levels are terrific, absolutely. Oh, God. Sickening punches for William Joppy. What a shame he's talked himself out of multi-million dollar fights with the likes of Mosley, De La Hoya and Calzaghe. He's only picking up about $325,000 for this. It's uh, unbelievable, really, when you consider how great a fighter Bernard Hopkins is. Much less than all the major fighters in the world. Much less. Three to your hand. Three to your hand. Still Joppy remains in there, bravely taking his pounding, trying to come back. Nothing left to hurt him. Well, big right hand from Joppy. Can he get lucky? Nothing to lose. Yeah, he's got to go for it. Needs an emphatic knockout. Nothing else will do. Well, he's got 25 grand to lose, that's for sure. Or 50 grand to win if he stays the distance. And think of the money he'd make if he had won this unified title. Left hook to the body once more. Choppy looks at his corner in pain. Just dabs at that foil that's come up on the right-hand side of his face. A torrid night for the Maryland middleweight. Well, Stuck it's it all or nothing Stuck now. It give me some ice. Give me some ice. Give me the mouthpiece. Give me here. Give me here. Come on, lift it up, baby. It ain't over yet. Come on, we gotta bang this guy, huh? How come you got dropping his right hands or left hooks? You gotta throw those. Bleed me, Joppy. Those. I don't know. Oh damn! The last one. Oh Lord, Suck it in, Joppy. It's the last round, Lord have mercy. Give it to a four, one, twos, and one, two, three. Well, it's a massive lead for uh, Bernard Hopkins. There's yeah. your card. Yeah, it's a nine points. He's only lost the one round so far in the fifth. And even that was close, but Joffy tried the harder. But, um, no, it's, it's, it's a clear victory for Bernard Hopkins. And maybe the scorecards are not required. The crowd take to their feet and applaud the display that Bernard Hopkins has put on in this world middleweight fight. Can he stop William Joppy under three minutes? And Joppy, of course, we are positive, needs a knockout. Maybe he won't go down with the greats like Monson and Ray Robinson and Hagler and Ketchell. But um, in our generation, Nagate will remember him. Oh, we certainly will. And possibly will be down because the only really big fighter he boxed, Jones, he lost to. Jones is brilliant. There's been nobody else to really give him a super fight. That's the problem. Good left hook there, Lance from Hopkins. And the uppercut. Oh, he's desperate for the stoppage. Can Joppy last? Look at him come back. He showed a lot of grit and heart, William Joppy, tonight. He's taken his lump, bumps, bruises. Let him go. And shots from all sides, but he's still there fighting back. A true warrior. Yeah, he is. And he's looking for that shot now. He's having a go, let's be fair. Oh, let it 
Good body punches inside the uppercuts from Hopkins. Great shots again. Oh, Hopkins really going for it. Referee has a closer look. Not much coming from Joppy. He's got to get off those ropes quickly. Well, the referee can't stop this, surely. Not Look yet, how jaded William Joppy is. And Hopkins so badly That's wants it. this knockout. I said, let him out. Okay, you just wait. Time go back. $50,000 on this. Big right hand, a minute to do it. William Joppy may deserve to see the bell, but the executioner takes no prisoners. Now showing a sign of tiredness, Hopkins. We'll forgive him for that. And Joppy looks like, unless he takes a big shot, he's going to make it. Look at the state of their faces, their legs, their bodies. And you can see what's happened throughout these 12 rounds. Choppy again on the ropes. Courageous. He's got to fire back. I right, stop walking. Let him out. Come on, let him walk it up. Clinging in there, William Choppy. Hopkins is running out of time. I stop walking. I got you. Just over 20 up. seconds left. Everybody knows about this bet. It's been so well publicized. The arena here, so excited. Looks like he's going to lose the bet, but win even more fans here in Atlantic City. Bernard Hopkins has put on an absolutely brilliant boxing display. The crowd rise to salute one of our best pound-for-pound boxers. We're lucky enough to be here to commentate on him at ringside and back home. Boys, you're lucky enough to have seen this. Yeah, brilliant performance, and the face says it all, doesn't it, a brilliant joppy. Look at those grotesque swellings on either side. Hardly a mark on Hopkins. He's boxed the number two in the world and nothing, no, no effect. Easy. He really wanted that finish, didn't he? Didn't get it, though. Joppy, to be fair to him, you know, so gutsy. Gave so much. And as you said, Adam, it wasn't a brilliant fight, it was a bit one-sided, but a brilliant display and, and something that uh, I'm privileged to have seen. Bernard Hopkins remains unbeaten in a decade. He's still by far the best middleweight in the world, even though he owes William Joppy 50,000 of his 325,000. <laughs> yeah, he's, so he's on 275,000, one of the best pound for fighters in the world for that. Bowie Fisher back with his prodigal son arm round him and uh, Hopkins I think wants to go over to see the very deflated and puffed up William Joppy a lot of bad feeling before the fight but I'm sure there's mutual respect afterwards well we saw the way Ricardo Mayorga went over to Corey Spinks you know that's all thrown out of the window after the fight Respect is gained and uh, earned. That's the way, that doesn't hurt. Just shove it in my face, doesn't matter. He'll be so despondent, William Joppy. He gave everything he could. But look at the fresh face of Bernard Hopkins. We don't know <laughs> for definite because we wait for the judges' cards. Yeah, they we, are Melvina Lathan, John Stewart and Stephen Weisfeld. Of course we do, Nicky, but it's got to be made official. That's what they're there for. We all know every one of the 12,376 people, including Tyson Lewis, Roberta Duran, Tommy Hearns, the Sphinxes, Trinidad, and you and me, Bernard Hopkins is the world middleweight champion and rightly so well i scored it 119 to 109 and i can't see how it'll be any different to that really we finished the year with a, an exquisite performance display of boxing skills from a man who came up the hard way who learnt the sport who was saved by the sport and is now rewarding the boxing public with his every fight. 
Maybe Shane Mosley, maybe Delahoya next. We go to the scorecards. Melvina Lathan scores it 119 to 109. John Stewart has it 118 to 109. And Stephen Weisfeld scores it 119 to 108. All for the winner by unanimous decision. And still the undisputed middleweight champion of the world, Bernard the Executioner Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins, one of the best fighters in the world. A 10 out of 10 display. And I hope you enjoyed it back home. I'm willing to cut off two pounds and come down at 57, maybe 56. If it's Delahoya, I'll cut off my right leg to come down at 56 for my title. But we, I need I need people to stop protecting him. And you know what I mean? I'm not coming down on y'all. Just y'all want to see the best fight for the fans. I mean, I love Delahoya's face, but yeah, you know, you know, he got the looks, I got the other looks. It's a big money fight. And and everybody wants to see it. I don't want, you know, it, you know, my ogre didn't come through tonight. I don't want my ogre now. And that's you know, my ogre is a gutty fighter. What about Spinks? But Corey Spinks, the jinx. You know, I would love to have an opportunity, but he's not a middleweight. Me and him, you know, we talk, he's not a middleweight. He, you know, he wants Shane now. Look, let's get to Oscar. That's the big money fight. If Roy Jones want to come out at 170 after he looked with Tarver, I'll be, I'll be willing and love to take that. 